Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make crazy advanced chatbots that not only use multiple LLMs, they also scrape websites, ingest your files and connect to databases so that you can make some of the most powerful chatbots today. All you will need to do is make an API call with this tiny bit of code and get a text response back. We are going to use a Langflow to drag and drop all the components we need, such as this URL component to get all the text from a website, or this file component to get all the data from a CSV file and connect them together to LLMs, databases, and much more in order to build our very own chatbot that will answer questions about anything we want. For example, I will be building a chatbot that will answer questions about my website, codewithanya.com, as well as the full stack developer course that I sell on there. As the information of what is in each module is not readily available on the internet, as well as published after OpenAI's training cutoff date, we will be getting all the text from this site, as well as feeding in CSV data I have locally on my machine that has information on each course module to train my chatbot up. This will also ensure that my chatbot is always up to date with each site release. We will then also be storing some of this information in our Datastax Astra database that will allow us to store vector embeddings so that we can carry out similarity searches. More on vector embeddings if you don't know what they are to come. By the end, you will be able to ask questions such as, does this course teach object-orientated programming? And receive text responses back such as the Code with Annual Full Stack Developer course will teach you OOP in several modules or something similar. Now, this course is free and will always be free, so all I ask of you in return is that you give the Langfro Reaper a star to show your appreciation. So let's go, let's click on the link in the video description, head over to the star once you are logged into GitHub and give it a click. I would really appreciate it as I know it would make the Langfro team super happy and I've really enjoyed making this video with them. Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is head over to the link now, make sure I am signed in and give it a star, and off we go. Let's spin up our Langflow environment. So let's do it. First of a quick 60 second overview of what we're gonna be building before we do a real deep dive into every single thing. So here is the entire flow. Of course, you can't really see much, but I'm going to zoom in now and talk you through it. So first off, these four components, well, what they're gonna do is help us essentially get information from the codewithania.com course, which I have put into a CSV file here. So in the CSV file, you can see all the module names, what's in the modules, and of course the module number. So we're gonna take this information, feed it in here, vectorize it, and then store it in our AstroDB database as vector embedding, so we can do similarity searches against it. So with this now done, we can essentially build out our chatbot that will look through our whole database and bring back similar text to it. So we can, for example, ask, does your course teach anything about object-oriented programming? And then we can choose to return the five most similar items or the 10 most similar items if we want from this CSV file. Okay, great. So that's what that's gonna help us do. Next, let's actually build out the chatbot. And of course, for a chatbot, you need to have a text input and a text output as well. So we're gonna have a text input. We're gonna just type in text in here, or you can use the playground, or eventually we're actually going to use the API and use the JavaScript API so that we can actually use this in our projects. We can connect this to any app we build, okay? We can essentially send the text through here and receive text back after it's gone through this whole entire flow. Okay, so putting in some text input, once again, creating embedding out of it, searching our database, passing the data, storing all the chat memory that we've previously had, and then creating a prompt that we then also pass back to OpenAI to create a readable answer. But not only that, we're also getting the whole URL of codewithanya.com, so everything here, okay, we're essentially kind of getting all the a text from that site so that we can also pass it and pass it through into the prompt to give us more information about the codewithania.com course. 
okay? So all the information that you see here will be used. This was published past the OpenAI data cutoff point. So this is the freshest data. And we're also using this data that is not anywhere online as well. So we're feeding in two different sources into OpenAI to really make our chatbot powerful. So I hope you're excited that there's a lot to learn, okay? So we're gonna take things super slow. Let's do it. Okay, so first off, I'm just gonna start off on VS Code. I've already created a folder called Langflow Chatbot. So that's all I have in here at the moment. To get things going, I'm gonna have to first create a Python environment. And for this, I'm gonna press Command Shift P and then Python create environment should show up. So I'm just gonna click that and we're gonna create a virtual environment in the current workspace. So just go ahead and click on that. And then I'm just gonna select this Python interpreter right here as I believe it's the newest one. So here we go. This is now creating a Python environment for me. Great, so this is looking good. So now you should see this little thing show up here. I'm just gonna get up my terminal by pressing here and then we're gonna run the following commands. I'm gonna do python mpip install langflow u. Just make sure to have python 3.10 version or above installed for this to work on your system. So just go ahead and do that and wait for that to do its thing and then we're just going to run it. So once this is done, we will do that. In the meantime, if you want to, of course, once again, check out all the documentation, then it could be found here, github.com, Langflow AI, Langflow. So just head over, over to here. Once again, give it a star, just like me, if you'd like it. Okay, that will really mean a lot to me. Okay, uh, please go ahead and do that. Uh, this tutorial is of course free and all I'm asking for is this stuff. So all the information on how to start this will be here. So if you're watching this in the far future and something is outdated, please refer to here and get the latest information of what you need in order to start. This will be the next command we use in order to run it. So I'm just gonna go back here and check if that's finished and it is. So I'm just going to clear that and do Python M Langflow run and hit enter. If you're new to Python in general and especially in using it in VS Code, the instruction on how to do it, so getting started with Python in VS Code, can also be found on this URL, so code.visualstudio.com docs python forward slash python tutorial. And it will essentially tell you the prerequisites that you need, so as we know we need to have Python 3, VS Code and the VS Code Python extension. So these are essentially the steps that we did. We have the Mac OS version as well as other versions too. So here we are installing Python if you need. So great, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I've given you all the tools to debug if you have not made it this far. Cool. So let's check back on our project. So this is the version of Langflow that we are starting today. It's version 1.0.5, but of course, if you're watching this in the future, that version will have changed. And amazing, here it is. So this should pop up for you automatically. If it doesn't, you will see a URL here. Just go to that same URL like I have, okay? And we're going to essentially create a new project. So all I'm going to do is just select new project and we're gonna start with a blank flow. Wonderful, so let's do it. Okay, so we have Langflow set up. The next thing we need to do is set up our database, which for this tutorial is gonna be Datastax Astra. And we also need to get our OpenAI key. So for this, I'm just gonna head over to Datastax. So here we go and just go ahead and try for free. I've already signed up, so I'm just gonna sign in. I can sign in using my Google account, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna select that one, and once you are in, your dashboard should look like this. Great, this is looking cool. So I'm just going to minimize that and we're going to create a database. We need to select a serverless vector database as we are gonna be storing vector embeddings. 
So I'll talk you through vector bends in a bit. Just select that one. Our database name, well, we can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it code with Anya for the sake of this tutorial. So that is my database name. The provider is Amazon Web Services. You can choose another one if you wish. And I'm just going to choose a region. Great, and then we're gonna create a database. So super simple, that is really it. So here is our database called Code with Anya, and then we are going to come back to this after in a bit when pending is active. So that is one thing we have done. The next thing we're gonna do is get our OpenAI key. So let's head over to OpenAI. So here we are on OpenAI. Under products, I'm just going to click on API login. And this will essentially log me into my OpenAI account. Okay, and once again, I'm just going to choose to log in with Google because I have already signed up. And once I am on the OpenAI platform, I'm going to select API, so the API option, and this will allow me to get my API key. So here I can get my API keys. I can create a new key, and I'm just going to call this demo. Uh, I do have a project attached to this already. You might have to create one. And I'm just going to create a secret key. So copy that key somewhere safe because we're going to use it later. Okay? So great. That's all the prerequisites done. Let's continue. So now what we need to do is, well, first off, our first mission is to essentially get the modules right, the modules that make up the codewithania.com course. And I have stored them in a Google Sheet. I will share that with you in the video description. So go ahead and use that one if you want for demo purposes. Okay, if you take the link I put in my video description, it should take you here. So here are my course modules that are in my course. These are just fake, okay? This is 200 fake modules that I have in my course. Uh, we have the title. So for example, one title of a module in my course is what is the difference between compilation and interpretation? We get an overview of it. We also get the category it belongs to, and then we also get the difficulty level. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just download this. So we're going to do file, download, and download it as a CSV file. So go ahead and click that, okay? So that is now downloaded, as you can see here. So, wonderful. So now here, the first thing we're gonna do is just essentially get that file so we can work with it in the dashboard. So, all I'm gonna do is just search in here, and this is gonna search all my components here. I'm gonna select file and just drag it in like so. So this is just a generic file loader. Uh, we can search for a file, so I'm gonna do that. Here is the file that we just downloaded. So I'm just gonna select it and open it up. Okay, and that's it. If we wanna inspect it at the moment, nothing will happen because we need to build the component first and we can do that pressing this little button right here. The green tick will appear knowing that we built this component correctly and now if we inspect it, we can inspect the output. So we have the file path and we have all the text of that CSV file, which is kind of useless to us at the moment, right? Because we want to essentially take this and put it in our data stacks database as vector embeddings. So those are two steps we need to do in order to do that, because this chunk of text is kind of useless to us now. So I'm just going to close that right here and let's continue. The next thing we need to do is just get a text splitter. So once again, I'm just going to search for split text and I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And then I'm going to get that output and just whack it in here. You will see it's kind of color coordinated. And if you're ever not sure about what could go here, you also have the available output components to your disposal. So these are all the ones that you can essentially connect your data output to. So that's really useful and same goes for the inputs. This will tell you which modules can have outputs that will match the input right here. Okay, great. So we're feeding that output into here. So we're feeding it in here and then I'm just going to keep the chunk overlap and chunk size of that text as it is. And next we are going to also get the open AI embeddings and just whack it down here. Now, we know that we want to put this in our Astra database. I'm just going to search for AstraDB, and here it is, and drag it in like so. 
So once we do actually have this text all split up, I'm just going to ingest that data, but also vectorize it. So I'm going to connect that one as well. Now, in order to do this properly, we of course need to put in our OpenAI API key for this little component to work and for us to be able to build it. So I'm just going to go back here, copy that again. So copy your API key and you can just paste it in like so. That's not going to be a problem. OK, you can view it or you can create a variable out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a new variable. Let's call this open. AI API key, uh, however you want to do it. And I'm just going to insert that value in here and save the variable. So now I could just select that and that variable is saved in case I need to use it again. OK, the model we're going to use is text embedding three small. So you do have a drop down of models you can use as well. So that is something to check out. And now the Astro DB database, well, of course, we need to be able to connect to it. And for that, we need to get the Astro DB application token, the API endpoint. And of course, we also need to create a collection out of it. So we can do that through this component. So let's just say I want to call my collection modules, right? Because essentially, that's what we're going to store. We're going to store the course modules. And next, let's actually connect to this database. So for this, I need the API endpoint. So I'm going to copy the API endpoint. Let's go back here and once again, maybe let's create a variable out of this so API endpoint, global variables and new variable data stacks end point. Insert the value. So you should also have this kind of structure, say variable. So now I can use the data stacks endpoint and same for the application token. So let's go back here. Let's generate a token. And once again, this will be unique, so please keep it safe. It should start off with Astra CS. So I'm just going to copy that whole thing, go back here. And once again, let's create a new variable. I'm going to call this data stacks token, insert the value. So yours should also look like this and save the variable. So wonderful, amazing. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get the content of that CSV file vectorize it and store it in our database. If I press this little button here, so I'm going to press that, you will see tick, tick, tick and tick, hopefully when this is finished building. OK, and next I'm going to show you actually what a vector embedding looks like and how it works. So if you inspect the chunks now, you will see that from a whole bunch of text that we got in the first component. This has now been split into chunks. OK, and then if we look back in here, so I'm just going to minimize that and click on Data Explorer, you will see a collection indeed called modules. And if you scroll down here, ta-da, you will see that chunk of text. For example, how does a web browser render a web page? And then you will see the vector. OK, that was created out of it. So I'm just going to copy that for you to see. You might need to refresh this page if it didn't show up for you automatically. So this vector, I've just copied it and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Maybe let's do it here. It's going to scroll down here just to show you. If I paste it in, it's essentially an array of lots and lots of numbers. So these numbers, I'm just going to show you exactly how big this is because it is extremely large. OK, all these numbers, what they do is essentially give semantic meaning to the text that we saw here. What I mean by semantic meaning is so let's break it down. Let's imagine that you have three words. So dot, dog and cat. As a human, you would most likely say that cat is more similar to dog, right? Because they're both animals. But a computer might look at these words and look at them lexicographically and decide that dot is in fact more similar to dog. So how can we give words semantic meaning so that computers can essentially understand that cat and dog are more similar? That is where vector embeddings comes in. And I have a whole course on this, a whole 30 minute course where I really deep dive into this. But for this course, just know that we can assign meaning to words with these numbers. And the more similar the numbers to certain words, the more similar a computer can deduce that they are in meaning. OK, 
So again, this whole array is super important and we are essentially going to use it to look in our database for words that are similar to each other, right? So I'm going to show you this in action in a bit. Let's actually now move on to building the chatbot that uses this data. So I'm going to go back here. We are now done with this. And up here, what I'm going to do is just select chat input. So I'm just going to drag that over like so. And we, of course, want to look in the Astra database, right? So once again, the collection we want to search is the collection we just made called modules, the application token, well, we can just get that from here. And then also the API endpoint we can get from here. And then we just need to search for that word. Now you would think that searching our database would work as easily, right, as us just searching for it in here. However, that is not correct because we can't take some text and compare it to the vector embeddings that we saw here, right? These are vectors. You can only compare vector to vector. So we need to get that text and turn it into, you guessed it, a vector embedding. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the OpenAI embedding, just like so. Let's get our OpenAI API key. And I'm also going to just connect it here. Okay, so now whatever we put in here is going to turn into a vector embedding and search our Astra database for words that are similar to it. So let's see this in action. Now it is important to know that you can only compare vector embedding against vector embedding if both embeddings are created from the same LLM, which is why I'm using OpenAI right now. So let's give this a spin, right? So we can type in something here. So for example, do you teach OOP, object oriented programming, question mark? And then I can essentially run this. So I can run it here and this should tick here, tick here and tick here. And essentially this is what we are sending over. We're just sending over the text. We also have some extra information and then we can also see the results. So we will see five items come back from our database with similarity scores that are high enough. Now we've limited this to four, okay? So here's the text, describe the principles of object-oriented programming. It's simply looking in our database for text that is similar to what we wrote here. Now, if we want to get back more, all I would have to do is simply select the component and all the components have this. It's an advanced settings. Now the advanced settings will essentially allow me on this occasion, so here are all the options that we have. I can select how many items I want to return back to me. So I can put in 10, for example. I can also show this on my component if I wish. And I'm just going to save those changes. So here we go. You will see that show up now, number of results, 10 that wasn't there before. I've chosen to show that. And now if I run this once more, so I'm just going to do that. 10 items, 10 most similar items. So 10 items with the highest similarity score to this piece of text should show up. So if I look now in the search results right here, we have 10 items. Okay, great. Now we have these 10 items, but this doesn't really answer our question of do you teach OOP, right? So now we're going to use this data. We have found data about it, so we can assume that the course does teach about object oriented programming. But now what we're going to do is actually feed that data, feed in those 10 items to an LLM in order to get a human like response. So in order to do that, we first need to pass the data because at the moment it looks like this, right? And we need to essentially turn it into text. So I'm going to use parse data and just drag it over here and the search results I'm going to feed into data just like that. So I'm just going to move that up here and then we're going to pass that into a prompt. So let's create a prompt. I'm just going to whack that over here and move it like so. So our prompt, what we're going to do, well, let's just open this up. I'm going to write some text of below is the con text. And then we can create a variable using these curly braces. And I'm going to do context like so. Uh, and then I'm just going to do these three lines to split it out. And I'm going to write given the context 
above answer the user's question. Okay? And then we're going to feed in the question. So the question, again, I'm just going to create a variable using curly braces, question, and then we'll get an answer. So just like that, that is my prompt. So if I save this, just remember that we created a variable called context and a variable called question. Check and save. You will see that context and question have appeared as variables here that we can then feed in. So what I'm going to do is after the data has been passed, I'm going to go ahead and feed that in to be the context of the prompt that we are writing, right? So if I just go ahead and run this one right here, so I'm just going to click that play button. Okay, and once that tick has appeared, I'm going to inspect this. And we have turned that table into just a bunch of text. So those are our 10 items. And we are feeding that into the context. Now, we can, of course, once we get that prompt, get an answer based on this. For now, I'm just going to use OpenAI. So I'm just going to drag OpenAI in here like so. But then later, I'm going to show you how to replace this with a different LLM. So we can have multiple LLMs in this project. For the input of this, I'm just going to pass through the prompt message. Our OpenAI key, well, we're going to select OpenAI key. So we are getting the prompt message and passing it through to the input. And the prompt message essentially takes the context of the data we get back from AstroDB. But of course, we also need to pass through the question. And that question is going to be the original question that I asked here. So we're going to get the chat input and just drag that message into the question like so. So as a refresher, we'll pass through the context and the question. So that will be essentially replaced here and here. Okay. And that whole piece of text will then pass in through to OpenAI. So if I now run this, let's have a look at what this looks like. And then we receive the text back. Yes, we do teach object-oriented programming. Our curriculum covers the fundamental principles of OP, including encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction, and then some more text here. So amazing, we get a response. We get a response essentially based on this course module's data that we fed in, and then we used OpenAI to get a human-like response. But that's not all. If we really want to build out our chatbot even more, we can essentially get it to get all the text from codewithania.com. So I'm just going to get this URL. I'm going to copy it. Let's go back in here. I'm going to find a component called URL. I'm just going to drag it up here. Let's maybe drag it just there. Paste in the URL, and of course, we also need to pass this data. So once again, you know what to do. We're going to get past data, because if we run this component as it is, I'm just going to show you the output of this. This is great for debugging, as I mentioned. Uh, we can see it here. We get text, source, title, description. We just want the text, okay? So if we pass that through into data and we select text, then if we run this, we should just get the text back. And if we look in here, that's what I have achieved. So it's just the text from my website, which gives information such as how many videos there are in the course and so on. So that is something I fed in. So now I can use that data, for example, let's see if it picks up the fact that the course has 470 videos and above. So let's get that text and let's feed it once again into the prompt. So for that, I'm actually going to adjust the template and say below is the website data about the course. And then maybe let's call this website. So just a variable called website. Let's make sure that says is. Below is the website data about the course. And use that information, again, to feed into our LLM. So now if I go ahead and connect this, so the text that we get back, we're going to feed into this variable. So that's our website text. And let's go ahead and ask a different question now. This time I'm actually going to use the playground and we need to get the output chat output. 
in order to show our text output in the playground. And this is essentially what we're going to get when we make an API call to this. So let's go ahead and just connect that text to here. And now I'm just going to use the playground. How big is this course, for example, and hit enter. And hopefully we should get a text response back that gives us information about how big it is, okay? The course offers over 70 hours of content, including 470 videos, group calls, show and tells, code, playgrounds, quizzes, and 22 projects. So amazing, this is looking cool. Some other things we can do is actually save the chat history. That means that each question can be kind of asked leading on from the previous one, so they don't have to be standalone questions. So I can lead on more from a question I asked previously. So that's what you can do with memory. So I'm going to go ahead and search for chat memory. Okay, so this is essentially remembering every single previous message that we asked. I'm just going to put that here maybe and then link that up okay because i want to get the messages and feed them into the prompt as well we want to get all the previous messages and feed them into the prompt history so let's get our chat memory and once again i'm going to edit the prompt i'm going to also just put the memory in like so so memory check and save and now memory will show up as a variable and i'm just going to connect to the chat memory super easy Okay, so now that will remember all the questions that we asked previously. Another thing we can do, okay, on the advanced settings of the OpenAI component is stream in the messages so it looks like they're being typed out. Okay, we're going to stream them. And for this, we're just going to scroll down and on stream, we're going to show this and also activate it and save the changes. So stream is now on. So wonderful, let's try this again. Maybe let's ask about something else. Do you teach solid principles? So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna do it on the playground, okay? And then I should receive a text output back. And great, we do teach solid principles. And then I can even ask a question such as, is this difficult or easy so we can ask that question too and it should respond based on the chat memory that we fed in okay wonderful so now instead of using the playground okay so instead of typing out here and testing out we can do so from our actual apps that we build where it's a next.js app or a react app i'm going to use the js api and just copy all of this code right here and then i can essentially make api calls to this okay to Langflow and then get responses back to my app so powerful stuff happening right here okay just go ahead and take this text all you're gonna have to do is replace the base URL and the API key but that is easy okay the base URL essentially can be found uh, here so you can take it from the Python API, so that's all you're gonna have to do. That is your base URL and your API code. Well, that's also easy under settings. Just go ahead and get your Langflow API key, add a new one. I'm gonna go with demo and create your secret API key. So those are the two variables you need for this to work. Great. Now, one other cool feature you can do, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, is you can also group components together. So you can, for example, I'm just going to press shift and select these four right here. So just like that and group them. Okay, so you can now rename this group whatever you wish. I'm going to go ahead and select this and let's go Astra DB ingestion. So these are the four components that deal with essentially ingesting my CSV file and turning it into vector embeddings. And you can also give a quick description here. So create and store vector embeddings from files. Of course, you can write whatever you wish. And you can also choose which one of these you want to hide, uh, which one of these you want to show. Okay, so at the moment, all these are showing, but I can, I'm just gonna show you, 
go ahead and under settings, just hide some of these. So for example, I can choose to hide the open AI API key and then also hide the API endpoint and then also hide the Astro DB application token and also hide the search input as we don't need that anymore. However, we should probably show the path of the file that we want to upload, right? Because essentially all we have to do is select a file and that will be put into our Astro DB database as vector embeddings. So that is another cool thing you can do with here. There is a lot more advanced stuff, but it's outside the scope of this tutorial. Okay, I'd really strongly suggest you getting to grips with the basics before exploring any of the advanced stuff, but there is a lot more to play around with. So really the world is your oyster. Now, in order to make our flow multimodal, I'm just gonna go ahead and use something called Grok. Groxon allow us to use a bunch of models, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do this. First off, let's just search for Grok in our components, drag it over here, unlink the OpenAI component and link up our Grok one. Same goes for the output. And now we're just gonna select the model we want. I'm gonna select Llama and then paste in our Grok API key, which you can get from this URL right here. Okay, so just go ahead and visit this URL and then simply create your own API key. Great, so now I've replaced it, I'm just gonna delete that OpenAI component and let's go ahead and test this out on the playground to see it works. Please go ahead and do so. Okay, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I loved it. I hope you can build something cool and please let me know what you built on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I would love to see what you've created with this super powerful tool. Thanks again.